So we could take this example here. We could take this example. Uh, yes. So we had earlier we had drawn this system. We had constructed the bond graph for this system. If you recollect. Uh, how are we going to derive the system equations for this system? OK. <clears throat> there is a slight <clears throat> uh, issue with this system because one of the elements, this R element is in a causal pattern which is different from this R element. Uh, let us see how we are going to arrive at this equation. <clears throat> We start with the first question. <clears throat> so what does this source give to this system? Give to this system. So it is providing flow to the system. It is this end is fixed. OK, so it is providing flow to the system. Uh, we have already discussed about uh, the issue of power directions in one of our previous sessions. And flow 13 is zero because this end is fixed. The velocity here is zero. Uh, next, we ask this question, what does this uh, element give to this? It gives flow six. So you can see flow six and it is the uh, motion that is imposed at this end. It is V1. So we have got V1 here, flow 6 as V1. Then we ask the next question. What does this element, this C element give to this effort of flow? Uh, can you answer this question for me? What does this C element give to this system? Effort, sir. Effort, effort sir. It gives effort 2. Now what is this effort to in terms of its its state? Effort two is just K2 into Q Q2. OK, so it is just K2 into Q2. It's a linear spring. So. Uh, it's applying uh, this force K2 into Q2. Then what is. Uh, what is this effort? What is this C element giving to this? It is giving effort three. And this effort three is K into Q3. Just like this, this spring, it is giving K into Q3 as the effort. So we have got uh, part of these questions, some of these questions answered, but we still have other elements. So let us see. Next is. Uh, what does this uh, effort one that is uh, here. What does this spring? What does this C element give to this? It gives effort, which is again K1 into Q1. It is a linear spring, so K1 into Q1. Uh, we still have this I element for which we have to ask this question and these are elements. So what does this I element give to this system? Effort of flow. Look at the causality. What, what is the output of this I element? So flow, sir. Flow four. Flow. Flow four. So it provides flow four. In terms of its states and parameters, this flow four can be written as P4 divided by M. Its momentum divided by its mass. What does this R element give to this system? We can see that it's giving effort to this system. So we'll write it as R multiplied by flow five, assuming it to be a linear R element. So effort five equal to R into flow five. OK. Now this flow 5 is not known. Look at this flow 5. It's coming from this one junction. It's a common flow junction. 
this information of flow 5 is coming from this bond number 11 so flow 5 is the same as flow 11 okay and flow so 11 is coming from this zero junction it is flow 10 minus flow 12 so flow 11 is flow 10 minus flow 12 and what is flow 10 flow 10 is coming from this one junction being brought in by this flow is brought in by flow 4 so flow 10 is the same as flow 4 okay and what about flow 12 it's the same as flow 13 because this is a one junction flow 12 and flow 13 are the same so we can see that flow 12 is the same as flow 13 now we still have the r elements left and we have to exhaust this question for these r elements also so what does this r element give to this system effort of flow effort oh. is it effort date or flow it which this r element is giving to this system so flow flow 8 correct so it's giving flow 8 to this system now flow 8 is effort 8 divided by r1 because it's a linear damper we know that effort 8 is equal to r into f8 but we are provided with we are, uh, this is giving f8 as the output so in terms of uh, so you'll have to write uh, output here on the left hand side f8 is equal to 1 by r1 into effort 8 now this part we will come to a little later but effort 8 effort 8 is coming from this one junction uh, it's a effort summing junction so effort 8 is effort 2 sorry effort 7 minus effort 2 okay you can see effort 8 is effort 7 minus effort 2 so effort 7 minus effort 2 effort 2 you already know here from this previous question as k to q2 and effort uh, 7 effort 7 is coming from this zero junction there's only one bond bringing in the information of effort here which is this bond number one so effort 7 has to be the same as effort one so effort 7 is the same as effort one and effort one we already know is k1 into q1 so this part is uh, written next is what does this element give to this it gives effort 5 it can be written as r upon m into p4 uh, it, that is because effort 5 is r into flow 5 we have already worked it out over here r into flow 5 and we have seen that effort 5 can be written as r into flow 5 is p4 by m okay p4 by m uh, because flow uh, flow 5 uh, it's the same as uh, it's it's derived over here in this part we work this out like this so effort 5 can be written as uh, r upon m into uh, momentum 4 so this is also done so we can write effort 5 as r into p4 by m minus 0 okay because effort 5 is coming from here from this one uh, r multiplied by this flow flow 5 is coming from this one junction flow 5 is the same as flow 11 flow 11 is flow 10 minus flow 12 we have done all this flow 10 minus flow 12 we have written all these things and we get it in terms of p4 by m so r into p4 by m so effort 5 is also known completely 
so we have finished the first question for all these elements now yes, comes sir yes please sir why is effort effort 8 is equals to yeah, effort 7 minus effort 2 effort 8 is equal to effort 7 minus effort 2 that's correct why it, effort, sir it should be effort 7 plus effort 2 na both both are hey, both both are the, bringing the effort no no it's not the see what you have to do is uh this uh, relationship of efforts is coming due to the power conserving nature there are two things one is the information and one is the direction one is the power okay now if you look at this effort 8 is equal to effort 7 minus effort 2 why because power 8 is power 7 minus power 2 okay if you do the power balance for this uh for this particular problem you see here you have power power 8 power 8 as equal to power 7 minus power Two power in bond eight is power in bond seven minus power in bond two. Okay, do you agree yes, with sir. this? Now you write this in terms of effort and flow variables. So here you have effort eight. Uh, flow is the same. We'll write it as F. This flow is F two or a seven or eight. It's the same because it's a one junction. And here you have. Effort seven into flow minus effort two into flow. Okay. What is common on both sides is flow. So you get effort eight equal to effort seven minus effort. Okay. See, there are two things you should not confuse. these things are the direction of uh, the power the variable of power and the information of power uh, the information of the variable of power now where is which end is this information coming from that is being shown by this causal stroke but the algebraic uh, Uh, way in which it is done, it is actually coming from this power relation. Okay, I hope this point is clear to you. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so now, in the step two, we ask the question: What do the what does the system give to the elements with integral causality? <clears throat> you see, there are four elements with integral causality. three of these are c elements and one is an i element <clears throat> now first thing what is this c element giving to this system sorry what is what, yeah what is the system giving to this c element is it effort or flow you can see that it is giving flow flow 1 okay so flow 1 that is q1 dot that is equal to this flow flow 6 minus flow 7 minus flow 9 okay so you can see it is flow 1 is equal to flow 6 minus flow 7 minus flow 9 okay now this flow 6 flow 7 flow 9 flow 6 we already know is v1 flow 7 flow 7 has to be worked out this flow 7 is coming from this one junction and it is being brought in by this flow 8 <clears throat> so flow 7 is the same as 
one by r into flow eight. Now one by r into <coughs> f of eight. Okay, so oh, I'm sorry. Flow, uh, it's a common flow junction. I'm sorry. So flow seven is the same as flow eight. It's coming from this, and flow eight is. It is. Uh, we will be discussing it a little later. Flow eight. It is one by R one into F eight over here. Okay. Uh, and this F uh, eight. F eight is actually F uh, seven minus F two. We have already done this. uh effort 7 minus effort 2 and it uh, it can be substituted so you will find effort 7 is same as effort 1 which is k1 into q1 which is written here minus effort 2 effort 2 is k2 into q2 which is written here so you have f <coughs> you have flow 8 flow 8 is over here so <coughs> flow 7 flow 8 they are the same so we can substitute this over here obtained from here okay now flow 9 flow 9 is the same as flow 4 flow 9 is the same as flow 4 because it's coming from this one junction and in this one junction the flow is being brought in by this bond 4 so this is a common flow junction all the bonds have the same flow so flow 9 is the same as flow 4 and you know that flow 4 is p4 by m from the previous question so flow 4 is p4 by m okay so you can see that <clears throat> the first equation it is now written in this form this equation has the derivative of the state on the left hand side and it has states and parameters you can see q1 q2 p4 these are states and the others are parameters so all the terms on the right hand side are known <clears throat> next is we will uh, ask the question uh, to for our yeah so the next question is what does the system give to this element is it giving is it giving flow or is it giving effort okay so it is giving flow or effort can you guess you can look at the causal pattern it is giving flow to the system is giving flow to to the c element flow to is q2 dot and q2 dot is equal to what this flow is coming from this one junction being brought in by this bond 8 flow 8 and we know flow 8 is actually just from here it's just 1 upon r1 into k1 q1 minus k2 into so we know flow 8 okay so uh, on the right hand side we again have on the left hand side you have the derivative of the state <coughs> q2 dot and on the right hand side you have all the states and parameters which are known so that's also determined okay so we have got q2 dot is equal to 1 upon r1 into k1 q1 minus k2 into q2 uh this is about the derivation of equations for these two state uh, these two elements only we have done it for q1 and q2 uh, we can derive it for other elements also let us do that what does the system give to this c element effort of flow you can see from the causal pattern it is giving flow so flow 3 flow 3 is the same as flow 11 and flow 11 is 
P4 by M. We have already <coughs> done this in our previous question. So we already have this uh, flow 11 with us as P4 by M. So this is our fourth, uh, third equation that is Q3 dot equal to P4 by M. Okay. Now the last equation that is what does the system give to this element, high element? It gives effort of flow. <coughs> it gives effort and effort in terms of its state is P4 dot. So you can write P4 dot P4 dot equal to uh, P4 dot equal to effort 9 minus effort 10. Okay, effort 9 comes from this zero junction brought in by <coughs> this bond number 1. So effort 9 is the same as effort 1 and effort 1 is known as K1 into Q1. What about effort 10? It is brought in by this zero junction effort 11 brings it into this zero junction and effort 11 is effort 3 plus effort 5. So you can do this part. Uh, effort effort 9 is effort 10, effort 9, uh, uh, sorry, effort 9 minus effort 10, effort 9 is equal to effort 1 and effort 10 is effort 11. Effort 11 is effort 3 plus effort 4. Both effort 3 and effort 4 are already derived earlier in terms of states and parameters. So all the terms on the right hand side are known in terms of states and parameters. Effort 3 is actually K into Q3 and effort 5 is R into R upon M into P4, R upon M into P4. So all these terms are known. So you have these first order, four first order equations. And uh, on the right hand side, on the left hand side, you have the derivative of the states. And on the right hand side, you have states and parameters. OK, uh, it's a very simple procedure. It's just a two step procedure. Uh, we'll do a few more problems on this, a few more examples. Uh, I'm sure it will become very clear to you as we proceed. Uh, if you have any difficulties so far, please ask me now. <clears throat> 